Hi everybody, welcome for joining me on my latest little YouTube video. Uh, for this video, this is a bit of a response to um, PC31, the vinyl policeman. He's actually got a thread um, going at the minute and it's a um, record label thread. And it's five albums from five artists all on the same label. So you can show five LPs or albums um, by five different artists, but they've all got to be on the same record label, which is actually a bit harder than you think in a lot of ways. Um, so I've decided to give this a go. This is the first time I've, I've ever done anything like this in the VC uh, vinyl community. Um, so I hope you like it. Um, and we're going to kick off. Mine is actually going to be, no surprises really, if you know me, it's going to be the Apple label, but I'm not going to do any Beatles or solo Beatles Apple albums. I'm going to uh, purely do albums by other artists that were signed to Apple. So we're going to kick off with the first one, which is James Taylor. And it's simply called James Taylor. This was released in 1969, I think it was, or 1968, sorry, 1968. So this is... Um, this is a UK copy and it's got the Apple inner sleeve, the original Apple inner sleeve, copyrights and all that things on it. Um, it is Apple 3 or Sapcore 3, so it's on the dark green Apple, so that's side 1 and then that is side 2. Quite an interesting album. Um, he was signed one to through, I think, was it Peter Asher brought him to the attention of the Beatles. So he was signed to Apple. Uh, and I think, he only, I think he only made the one LP for, for Apple. Uh, and then Peter Asher whisked, not, whisked him off to um, Warner Brother late, the Warner Brothers label, didn't he, in America, where he became quite a big star, didn't he, James Taylor. But on this, he's, he's more like a folky singer-songwriter. Singer -song um it has got some nice songs on it. Um, I'm trying to think which is the one that. Um, oops. So you've got Don't Talk Now, Something's Wrong, Knocking Around the Zoo, Sunshine, Sunshine, Taking It In. Something in the way she moves, which inspired George to write something, didn't he? He actually, you know, borrowed that title in one way, didn't he? Then you've got Carolina on my mind, which was a single. Brighten your night with my day. Night owl. Rainy day man. Circles around the sun. And the last track is the blues is just a bad dream. So you do, it is a gatefold sleeve, very reminiscent of the Beatles um, for sale album. The same sort of flimsy construction where you get there. Um, but the, se the seams do seem to be a lot better on this. And this actually came in two versions. So there's one with James Taylor written in black. And then there's one which is exactly the same album. But it's got James Taylor written in orange. So that's number one. Um, in this five uh, you can pick these albums to look quite cheap well relatively cheaply um, so that's the first one the next one is it was probably this is by one of the, the artists that was most probably one of the most um, popular in terms of record sales in the UK uh, Mary Hopkin this was produced by Paul McCartney this was a debut LP called Postcard. Now when you think this came out just after she'd had a worldwide hit with Those Were The Days and yet Those Were The Days isn't on this. Uh, you get a lot of like show songs and things on this like Lord of the Reedy River, Happiness Runs, Love Is The Sweetest Thing. Then there's one in that's actually sung in Welsh which I can't pronounce. The Honeymoon Song. The puppy song, Inchworm, 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 two and two are four, four and four are eight. 
Then you've got uh, Voyage of the Moon, Lullaby of the Leaves, Young Love, yeah, and that is the old song. Um, Someone to Watch Over Me, The Game, and Show Business, which is basically there's no business like show business as far as I can remember. So like I say, it was produced by Paul McCartney and the photos were actually took by Linda. And this is this is a mono one, so it's not Sapcore, it's Apcore, so it's Apcore 5. No, it is a nice nice um record. It's not one that you'll be playing all the time, to be perfectly honest. But it is still nice to have in your collection. So that's side one with the all rights and all that lot still on it and this was released in 1969 by the way lovely album um, of course Mary Hopkin went on to marry Tony Visconti didn't she I think and she did uh, backing vocals on David Bowie's low album I believe under the name of Mary Visconti I think she's still recording today, to be honest, but yes, that's number two, postcard by Mary Hopkin. In some countries, they called her Mary Hopkins, didn't they? Um, next up, we've got, I think this is probably one of the best Apple albums that was ever released. Unfortunately, this is a USA copy, though, so I hope that's allowed um, PC31, The Vinyl Policeman, because I've tried everywhere to get a UK copy of this, and they're like, basically rocking all shit, to be honest, so... It's Jackie Lomax with Is This What You Want? Which was his first LP for Apple. Um, so this is an American one. So it's just ST3354. Obviously it's stereo. So the tracks are Speak To Me, Is This What You Want, which is a good day, New Day, which is, um, is this what you want, which is a good song, sorry. Then you've got New Day, which I think was released as a single, wasn't it? Uh, Sunset, Sour Milk Sea, which was actually uh, written specially for and by George Harrison, wasn't it? And then Fall Inside Your Eyes. Sour Milk Sea was actually released as a single, although I don't think it actually charted in the in the UK I'm not sure well it might have charged a bit in the very very low reach of the chart and it featured Paul was on it George was on it uh, Ringo was on it Eric Clapton was on it I think the only person that wasn't on it was John Lennon but apparently John Lennon did actually like it so that's side one see the Apple labels are slightly different on the American versions and then on side two you've got Little Yellow Pills Take My World Take my word, The Eagle Laughs at You, which again, I think was a single. Baby, You're a Lover, You've Got Me Thinking, and I Just Don't Know. And it was actually, oh, this was actually produced and arranged by George Harrison. Lovely sounding record. Um, very hard to get in the UK, uh, especially a UK pressing of it. Um, this is, like I say, this is an American one. But even that is quite hard to get. I mean, you'll be lucky to get this for under 50 quid. I tell you, very lucky to get a copy of this for under 50 quid. And that is the American one. The UK version is basically impossible to, to find in anything in good condition anyway. So that's Jackie Lomax. Uh, he was originally in a Liverpool band called The Undertakers, wasn't he? Um, it's a shame he didn't get a bit more promotion from Apple because I think he could have actually been a really, really big star. Um, you know, he's got, he's got a really, really good sort of like soul and blue sort of voice and it could sing rock as well, you know, so. Right, the next one is... Bear with one second. Is the last album that was actually released on Apple by, you know, an artist other than a member of the Beatles. Um, it is also the last album that was released of fresh material. So, you know, it wasn't a compilation. And this band is very, very special to me in a lot of ways. I've done a lot of research on this band. And I think the story of this band is, it's got its, its good bits and its bad bits, but it's very, very sad as well. 
So if you haven't guessed, it's an album by the band Badfinger. Um, this was the last contractual LP that they made for Apple. Um, and again, they went off to Warner Brothers. I think Jackie Lomax went to Warner Brothers as well. So there's a lot of like, artists that was on Apple originally that ended up going to Warner Brothers. And I think that was mainly due to Pete, Pete Asher. Uh, so this was the last album, simply called Ass. And that is the ass look. Being, that's supposed to represent Badfinger, I think. And the carrot is the golden carrot to go to Warner Brothers. I think that's right. Um, this is a UK copy, but this is a slightly... Well, I say it's slightly later. This is from the 1990s. So on side one, you've got the beautiful Apple of My Eye, which was a single but didn't chart in the UK. And I can never understand why, because that is an absolutely outstanding track. Uh, then you've got Get Away, Icicles, The Winner, and then Blind Owl. Side two, you've got Constitution, When I Say, Cowboy, I Can Love You, and Timeless. And then on this one, you actually get a bonus track, which wasn't on the original album, of Do You Mind. And this is also a promo cop promotional copy, not for sale, it says on there. So this was from 19... 1996, but the actual album was originally released in 1973. Very, very, very sad story. So this will be of interest because you'll see what the, um, you know, 1990s Apple label looks like now as well. Which, to be honest, was very, very similar to the 70s Apple one. You know, it's on the light green um, label. And this is uh, Sapcore 27. Really fantastic song uh, songs on you, um, and I think at the time they had to credit everything because written by Badfinger, but something to do with uh, the copyright claims or something. So, although on here it does say who actually wrote them, so that's all the songs on it. You did get this in the sleeve, which is I think this was on the original as well. Beautiful album, very underrated uh, by a lot of. Uh, you know, record collectors and Beatles fans, to be honest, let alone Bad Badfinger um, fans. It's always been one of my favourite Badfinger albums, but, I, you know, I know a lot of people don't like it. Um, and then they went up to do, within releasing this within six months, they released the debut for Warner Brothers, didn't they? And because there was like all lawsuits and everything going on, I don't think they got any money for the next couple of years, which is why one of the members committed suicide, uh, Pete Ham. Very, very sorry story, but, you know, a great album. Um, if you ever see this, you know, I don't know how hard this one is to get now because these that came out in the 90s are quite rare in their own right now. Um, but yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Um, and it was produced by Chris Thomas, who went on to produce The Pretenders and... Um, Sex Pistols and people like that. And Paul McCartney, he needed to produce or co produce Back to the Egg from McCartney. Um, yeah, produced by Chris Thomas and Badfinger. Great little album. Um, and this is a other copy I've got, but this is, um, I think this is Dutch um, Outlaw Records. I think it is, oh. but this is it. This is an original 1973 copy. I think it's Dutch. No, it's not it's South African because um, it's Sapcore L 27J. Yeah, this is a South African copy. It is still on Apple though. It's you know, um, 1973 Apple Records Inc. Sapcore, and then in brackets L 27J. Although on here it says that it says the songs are copyrighted to Trio Essex Limited on that one. And I've got a US version of this as well, but I'm not going to show you that one. Just try and make it as quick as I can. Great little album. Uh, like I say, if you can ever find this album, um, I would 
highly recommend it, that's all I'm going to say on that one. Very underrated album and a very underrated band in a lot of ways. Yes, they had a lot of they did have a lot of early success with Apple. Um, but then when Alan Klein and managers and things came into it, they ended up basically working for nothing, didn't they? Um, you know, they weren't paid the royalties for you know two or three years. So yeah, cracking album. So the final album we're gonna look at is Probably one of the hardest ones to get in the UK. Um, I think it sold more in America than it did in the UK, to be honest. And it's Elephant's Memory. Like I say, this is a UK copy. Um, this is Sapcore 22. And it was produced by John and Yoko. And of course, bad thing... Uh, Elephant's Memory was John's like backing band at this sort of time. On, on you know, he was planning to do tours and everything, everything with him, wasn't he? Uh, but I think the only thing they really did was sometime in New York City album, and he did the one-to-one -one concerts, didn't he? In 1972, which is a shame because they were quite a little tight band for him to play with. Um, it is a gatefold as well. Did you get an inner sleeve? Yes, you're getting in a sleeve as well. And then you get the tracks and everything on the back. Like I say, it was produced by John and Yoko. I don't think they actually appear on it, do they? I think they just produced it. And like I say, this is a rare UK copy. And these go, these do go for silly money on um, eBay at the minute. That's if you can find one. I think last time I looked, I, I don't think I could find one of these for less than a hundred pound. I didn't pay anywhere near that for this. Uh, I did pay quite a bit, but nowhere near that. So on side one, you've got Liberation Special, which I think was released as a single, wasn't it, in America. Yeah. Local Plastic Ono Band is the final track. Made in the UK, Apple Records. Very nice heavyweight record. This was from uh, 1972, by the way, so this was released after. Um, Sometime in New York City, I think. But then just after this, I think John and Yoko split up, didn't they? And John went and had his lost weekend, as they say. And then when John and Yoko got back together again in 1975, I think these, you know, had gone off on their own sort of thing. Which is a shame because, you know, perhaps if it have, if, you know, 1973, if John and Yoko would have stayed together, they might have gone on a world tour or something. And, the, you know, Elephant's Mummy might have been his backing band for that. So, that's my little uh, go at doing one of these thread things. Like I say, it is the first one I've ever tried. So, if I've made a few mistakes on it, you know, um, I'm sorry. But, you know, I just thought I'd have a go. Um... Like I say, this is um, in response to the record label thread by PC31, The Vinyl Policeman. Uh, five albums by five artists on one record label. So I think we've done that, haven't we? And like I say, I've actually not done any Beatles ones as well. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and that's going to be it for today. As always, thank you to everybody that is liking and, you know, subscribing and leaving comments um and that's gonna be it as always love your records cherish your records clean your records but above all play your records uh so i hope you've enjoyed that so it's very very hot here in the uk today i think it's the hottest day of the year so far and it's causing chaos so far so whatever you're doing please stay safe and uh, 
I'll love you and leave you and I'll see you in the next few days because I'm back at work tomorrow so this will probably be the last video I'm going to do for a while so until I see you next time it's Beakley Dave wishing you all peace, love and happiness and I'll see you soon, ta-da my ducks.